Hello, <clears throat> this is a quick introduction to Android for Unit 1. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Android operating system and why we're using it. So as you probably know, there are two main operating systems for mobile devices, uh, the Android operating system and Apple's um, iOS operating system. Um, and we'll actually, we'll be doing both in the second half of this course. We'll be using a higher level language called Flutter, and then from that, we'll be creating both Android and iOS apps as well as web uh, apps uh, for that. Now, one of the challenges when creating iOS apps is that you need to do this on a Mac. You need a Mac iOS. So even when we're using Flutter, if we're going to want to create uh, an iOS app, we're going to have to switch to a, uh, some hardware from uh, Macintosh. So uh, to make it more universal, we're using Android because you can uh, develop Android on any sort of platform, uh, Windows, uh, Linux, uh, Mac uh, sort of stuff. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the, the Android operating system. There's a link here to the Wikipedia article on it, which gives a somewhat non-biased uh, overview of it. So the Android operating system is based on a Linux kernel and it's developed uh, since like 2007. It's gone through numerous iterations uh, and availability. So a little bit of history of this if you want to read through this. Um, and then some of the general layouts of this if you're not familiar, but again, a lot of this stuff isn't that important uh, here. Now, Android's developed by Google and they release changes regularly. We're in Android 12. Now, one of the problems is that uh, these are not often uh, updated to a lot of the devices. Uh, Android has their own pixel lines of phones and they'll update those automatically to the newest release. But a lot of um, developers, since Android is open source, take the Android operating system and, and customize it to their own hardware and setup. And so then when Android releases a new release, they have to redo uh, all that into their own custom version of the system. And so a lot of um, manufacturers will maybe do one or two updates and then stop updating. So there's a lot of Android devices out there running older Android systems that, and, and they can't be updated generally because the manufacturers uh, are not releasing uh, updated versions of, the, of their customized version of the Android operating system for that. Um, and again, this also walks you through the history of the different Android operating systems. We want to see where we came from. Let's talk a little bit about the Android architecture here. So this is kind of the layout. At the bottom, That we have the Linux kernel. This isn't, uh, in some ways, a full Linux kernel. Uh, it's somewhat limited in what it can do, but uh, it's based on the Linux kernel and runs a lot of Linux stuff. But we never generally see that. On top of this is the what's called the HAL, or hardware abstraction layer which is a, a layer that um, that allows this to run on any sort of hardware system uh, there. So different manufacturers, uh, when they create a phone, they just have to update these drivers to drive whatever sensors they want, whatever camera they're using or whatever. And then the rest of the stuff uh, above this can deal with this sort of stuff. Uh, so this is the hardware abstraction layer. Uh, because this is written in Linux, uh, there's a lot of C and C++ code underneath and some stuff written very fast for that. So there's a whole set of libraries in C or C++ um, here, but again, we won't be working with that. On top of this, it's the Java API framework. So this is what we often consider as like where we'll be programming to this. This is our level. And then so we will create apps that will uh, program into the Java API framework and work on that. Sometimes we'll deal with this Java, Java runtime which is more the operating system stuff, uh, but even those those we have to go through the Java API for, uh, framework here. That's a general layout of this application uh, here. Now, the systems we'll be using, well, first let's talk about Android market share. Um, in class, we're going to have you look up some articles on Android market share. And if you're on your, by yourself, I, uh, working online, essentially you do the same thing. Do a Google search on Android market share, stuff like that. Pay attention to how old the articles are and if they're talking about percent of devices that are running Android uh, or percent of revenue generated by the, uh, the like Android Play or, or Google Play Store versus the Apple uh, marketplace. What we tend to see in this material is that the Android market share, the number of devices running Android is very large compared to the iOS or Apple uh, share. but 
uh, as far as revenue generated from the app uh, from the apps sales, uh, Apple tends to sell uh, generate more revenue. So people who buy Apple uh, devices are more likely to spend money on apps for that as, as opposed to Android for that. So it's a good uh, to look at the current market share and that. So I'll leave that as a, a simple Google exercise for you to see what what's current and see has it changed is uh, and what does it match what you're kind of thinking of here. Okay, then the quick review of the software we'll be using. This first unit, we're using uh, App Inventor from MIT, which is this block-driven, real simple interface that generates both Android and iOS uh, apps that we use in CIS uh, principle of our CS uh, 1001 class. So just a refresher on that and go over and talk about and introduce some of this more high-level concepts we'll get into later. Then units two through eight, we'll be doing Android Studio and Java uh, programming. Yeah, it's fun to look at this more complex Java stuff because at some point uh, you realize that the language looks more like I almost call Android. We're spending so much time calling Android libraries and working with Android, it's really hard to even see the Java in here. So that'll be a nice uh, learning activity with more advanced Java here. And then the last half of the course, we'll use something called Flutter, which is a new high-level interface language from Google. Uh, it actually, well, it's an interface toolkit kind of, and it uses a language called Dart. Uh, for the programming, and this will let us generate both Android and iOS uh, applications as, as well as web apps. So hopefully you'll enjoy this class.